In this video from a recent trip to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I was camping using our M416 military surplus trailer. And in a few of these clips, you see some of the challenges of loading a trailer securely and driving carefully to avoid conditions such as a vertical jackknife. In order to access the land where I normally camp, I have to go down an approximately 25 degree slope. In order to do so, the truck and the trailer end up at an extreme vertical angle at the hitch. I had to do it slowly on entrance because I wasn't entirely sure that the spare tire was not going to strike the back of the truck. Fortunately, a Pentolin lunar ring hitch flex extremely well. Okay, I've arrived here at the entrance to the land in the UP. I went ahead and aired down to 20 PSI. I don't normally air down when I come in here, but as you can see the ruts from last time, that's one wet spot that we got to figure out how to drive around and not through. But uh, otherwise everything's looking good. Now this time I'm going a little bit farther. I'm going to not camp in the main clearing, but I'm going to drive through a little route that I made for myself last time I was here and the real challenge is figuring out how those two tires are going to interact at the bottom of a 27 degree incline so we will see how this works out all right so this is what I was kind of trying to review there we go okay I did find my spot I'm gonna drive straight through there and then kind of straight up to the other side so I think I'm just going to kind of pull through and then pause. The thing I'm most concerned about is the articulation right at the bottom of this really steep. It's about 26, 27 degrees. And I just want to make sure that I take it slowly because I don't think, I don't, I, I can always do a hitch extension. I've actually got one in the garage, but I just don't want those jerry cans or that spare tire to push on the spare tire of the truck. I did some measurement and some quick trig back home convincing myself it's not going to be a problem, but between hitch clearance and everything else, it's definitely going to be tight. And one thing that <coughs> one thing the Hummer is not exceptionally good at, these H3s, it's got that chop top look, which is, you know, all very groovy, but not exceptionally good for off-roading. Well, here we go. Gently down the hill, mostly letting the gears work, but I do a little bit of control of the brake here. Now the bugger is going to be, okay, I can see that tire, so I just got to take it slow. I don't know if you can see through the right, you can kind of see right, can't get my finger in the way without my arm being in there, but right there you can kind of see that tire just about to touch the spare. Is as tight as you ever want to get it. Yeah, it looks like that's going to work, but only just. My goodness. I was right to be concerned. I'm going to look at what that looks like on the GoPro now. See just how bad that was. Look at this footage to see just how tight that was but you can kind of see how the hitch does drag 
through that. Not badly, but of course the way back up is going to be exciting, which is why I have my winch. I bought a pole pal pretty much primarily for that purpose. Yeah, you can see it's the, the pintle extends just enough that uh, it digs in the dirt, which means on the way up, very likely I will have the same experience on the other side of the little triangle. But back end cleared so that tire gets really close to the spare on the back of the truck as do I'm sure the jerry cans but I kind of measured it out at the angle that I observed on the inclinometer last time I was here and I'm pretty sure that's never going to be a problem but just wanted to make sure all right so that's that this is the lane I was making last time I was here I can pick up where I left off kind of laying down a corduroy road but first I'm going to Kind of just figure out exactly how I want to set up the trailer up here on this hill. Now I did not clear all of the stumps from this hill, so that's all very exciting. So I'm going to go pro back here on this tripod where I can manipulate it a little more easily. So I can drive right across here. This I all kind of took care of, just a pile of old wood, no big deal here. Nothing sharp or worrisome. I'm just mostly looking for hidden stumps that can mess me up. And as I thought I remembered, if I stay left here, I should be just fine. All kinds of uh, thorns down here. Fortunately, I don't see any poison ivy because I'm wearing shorts, but uh, these raspberry bushes will be less fun later. Okay, I think we're just going to kind of pull up forward there throw around some uh, loose wood with my gloves on and get myself an ideal spot. I might drag that tree out of the way and make that the camp spot and maybe right there kind of my pull through. We'll see how it works out. Right. Once again, it's a challenge with the Hummer because the visibility is so poor. Cheat a little bit with the GoPro and just stump just off my left front fender that I'm just going to head toward and then and over. I'll go ahead and take off the front locker just because I don't want to fight with my own steering too much. I'll drop the rear locker as well. I don't think I need to be locked right now. And around. There's that stump I was eager to avoid. Just got to kind of come up around here big arc. Let's see how the trailer is doing back there. Clonometer's up about over 15 degrees there. I take for granted that the truck can drive where I can walk. Sometimes I probably shouldn't assume that. I did look ahead. Should be able to swing this without being interfered with by any stumps time here. My goal is to pull forward up there and then back the trailer into position. We'll see how it works. This is looking kind of awesome here. Now it's a little different than I thought. I underestimate. I mean this has a really tight turning circle. I thought I'd be able to go to the right of that little mound. I think I'm going to stay to the left. Move these logs here. And then I can back the trailer in. Then when it's time to come out, I can either come out wide here or I can cut right through there. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work real well. All right, I think this is going to work. It's a remarkably level spot. I'm originally backed up a little farther, but I want to fight with that stump. The trailer is kind of surprisingly level. I'll pull up my iPhone level just to make sure, but I don't think I'm going to have to do a lot of work there. Uh, yeah, so every time I camp here, I want to be a little farther south, which is that away, and a little deeper in the forest. So, and right over where those orange bands is are on those little pink band and that stump. I actually ultimately want to be on the other side of that, because that's where the easement's going to go. So. That's most of the work for tomorrow. Tonight is most of today. I might run the chainsaw a little bit, but I think I'm mostly just going to 
kind of get things squared away. There's a mosquito in here I'm buzzing at the, my finger on the camera there. But uh, looking very, very encouraging. Definitely the farthest into the land I've ever gone with the truck and the trailer. Okay, I'm literally being eaten alive by mosquitoes here. Fortunately, the DEET seems to work. They're just more irritating than anything. So it's spring. It is in early May. It's been raining. And the good news is this is like the northeast corner of our land. This is the clearing that you first get to. You can kind of see that ribbons on those trees. Kind of marks the north boundary and approximately where the easement would end. So I find this very interesting and encouraging. Good news is it doesn't seem to be marshy or boggy. Bad news is this is the only challenge. I can definitely see where I can pick my way through the easement relatively easily right up until so this is the eastern boundary this section here that someone did cut a bit of it a long time ago this is the only bit that at least to me it's not real easy to see i can kind of see where Another bug. I want to turn in here and go right into there. I think a bunch of these young trees are probably going to have to go to provide access to that clearing. We'll see. Maybe, maybe there's a somewhat easier path on the other side. I think right over there is an amazing, like perfect rectangle that a critter hewed out of a tree. So we'll be able to figure out what kind of critter does that. Here you can kind of see, this is still inside the easement. It's not boggy. So who knows, maybe I can cut this turn. Maybe just clear a little bit of this deadfall. And maybe then, I think those holes are probably cut by the same type of armament. Some kind of woodpecker or something, but the other one was like a perfect rectangle. And then I just need to get just past this little cluttered area. And there's a nice clearing. Yeah, this is not how I expected to be recording my first exciting uh, trip down the little road we made here. But I got my chainsaw bar stuck in a tree, which is really stupid. Uh, so I'm gonna have to use my winch pull that back off. The video probably doesn't show the swarm of mosquitoes that's come up tonight. They really haven't been bothering me because it's cool enough and it's wearing a lot of clothes. I'm not even bothering you wearing deep right now. But anyway, this is farther than I have ever gone. I cleared all this earlier today. I was thinking, oh, tomorrow Sunday I'll go to church and take a nice little ride down the stuff that I cleared. But since I have to go rescue my chainsaw, Right yeah, it's only 57 degrees out and I'm sweating like a pig. Now, in the course of just trying to get access to our acreage, I actually have sort of kind of created, like in my humble opinion, it's a really cool off-road trail. And I've followed the uh, maritime convention here. Red is right, left is green or red to starboard, green to port when you're from the sea entering the harbor. So obviously I'm trying to get back to where our land is and that's the harbor. So hopefully I wasn't overly optimistic in the maneuverability of my truck here. Looks like I may have been on this one. I don't think I'm getting the truck and the trailer through this bend. Seemed like it would work. I was marking the trail. And of course, as fate would have it, my backup camera chose not to cooperate at the moment. I have to rethink this one. It's only turned so far that. Yeah, I actually think I could make it if I just played it a little bit better. But that is snug. I have 
absolutely swarm of mosquitoes. I haven't seen this kind of stuff since I used to go to wildlife refuge on the coast in Houston. This thing will do over a 20 degree off camber turn. It still feels freaky. It's one of the reasons I've never lifted a truck. So off camber just freaks me out. I'm glad I did a good enough job clearing it and making the holes big enough because I guess I kind of have to get to the end of what I cleared so that I can rescue my chainsaw. Oh, look at that. Looks like I dropped my chainsaw tool in the middle of the trail. I guess I can fetch that here. Alright. I gotta say, this is way, way, way tighter than it seemed when I was holding the chainsaw. chainsaws I can do a lot but still gotta leave the stump you know like maybe three four inches up alrighty well there I am and there's the very dangerously leaning tray that tree that really wasn't in my way at all but I decided I better take care of it and uh, got my chainsaw wedged in there I think the worst, <coughs> the worst part about these doggone mosquitoes keep flying into my eyes. Okay, so put the tree protector around that log. I'll winch it into a different position. That should break everything loose and release my poor suffering chainsaw. Yeah, not good technique, but whatever. Oh, look at that. Pulled my truck forward. All right. We'll see whether anything can break loose. So I got a few other options here. Well, this can be even more annoying than I thought. Take the tension off the winch, use a snatch block, and pull it sideways. Anchor on one of those trees over there. So again, it's no big deal. It's just a little frustrating. And we'll reposition the truck and. I will come at it from a tree somewhere back over there, one of those trees. I'll do the snatch block on the tree and I'll come around this way. It'll all work out. Alright, now unfortunately, <clears throat> I only have the one tree protector. It's a dead tree, but it's also a winch line protector. So the 
protector at the end of the synthetic line at the end of the synthetic line is protecting most of it, but that's still a very not ideal situation. So we got the line all pulling. Let's see if we can drag this off sideways, and that should that should do it. I'll just put myself out of harm's way, and we'll see how it works this time. Well, it's definitely trying to trying to move the truck along too. Now this all started because that tree was hanging over the trail, which wasn't safe, but as I cut it, <laughs> just complete comedy of errors. And there we go. A little more of that and the chainsaw, chainsaw should break loose. Poor chainsaw, if you can see it in the video. It's like everything is working and the tree is going to fall to the ground safely. It doesn't look like it's going to take out the other tree, although it could. It's mostly dead. <laughs> the chainsaw is still right where it started. There we go. Looks like the chainsaw is ready to pop out of there. I'm going to be very careful because everything's still under tension. We'll see if I can get it out of there. Well, have to take a long way around here. Okay, so the chainsaw popped right out. There's still some tension on the winch line there, so I'm going to be a little careful. Go ahead and take advantage of the truck being here to get that big nasty immediately out of the way there. It's like, it reminds me of my trip to Montana. I had virtually every piece of my recovery gear out. To reorganize all that back at camp. Still waiting to take Fred relative nearby out to dinner. All right. There we go. Okay, that looked pretty good. So I think now we're good. I'll make sure I take the tension off the winch line. What I think I'm going to do is go ahead and connect the winch line to that tree that refuses to fall. And I'm going to call it a day. Same problem I have with my phone, the GoPro was switching to photograph mode without me noticing. Okay, so it's routed out again. Oh, helps to use the right direction. Winch line's got a little friction on that log, that is not good. But what would be worse is leaving a tree hanging in the air where someone could die underneath it. And you can see it's kind of made a plow out of the bottom of this branch. But I think I've got just enough oomph there. I'll pull it a couple more feet and we should be fine. All right. I think we'll call that good. Everything. Got to give a thorough inspection of this winch rope for all the abuse I just gave it, but that's going to work. That tree is now safe. My chainsaws are, well, the steel is still operable, but it's got a tiny bit of gas left. I ran both chainsaws pretty much out of everything, but I did a lot farther than I thought I would. So again, the trail is going to go right down there and right down that last green and red mark at that point drive through there and we're on our property.
All right, so that small tree there, I'll have to come out. You can see the green. That's the yellow birch that gave me so much trouble. It was unsafe. It was kind of leaning out. It was ready to snap. And when I cut it, <laughs> first it wouldn't fall properly. It ended up sort of falling in the gap. It landed on that tree. You, kind of, you can see the scuffs on the tree up there. Its bark is torn up a little bit. And that tree is not so healthy either, but at least it's, in fact, it might be completely dead. But at least it's leaning the other way. But the yellow birch with that Y just basically straddled it. So there's no way it was coming down. So then I tried to like cut out a section. I was trying to be super careful, make a wedge, and I got the chainsaw bar stuck in it anyway. But I used the winch and we got that stuff cleared out. And then that tree got damaged, I think, from the other tree falling, but it doesn't matter. That one's gonna come down anyway. A little pair there. No, well, I'm not one to take out healthy trees. Fortunately, Fred, my brother-in-law's brother, kind of explained to me a lot of the trees that I'm going to be dealing with are not going to survive anyway. I can show you that here in just a second. So i got to cut this up. I kind of blocked the trail with it. I'm now kind of outside the marked trail. Again, just kind of driving along there. And here you can see where I'm going to have to curve down. The boundary of the land is just to my left, so I'm just staying inside the eastern boundary of the land. It's a beautiful old, I believe that's a hemlock, Fred was telling me. Beautiful old tree. Really tall. But you notice the grade drops down. I don't know if this is an ancient seashore or what it is. But you go down about 5-10 feet in elevation here, and when you do that, all of that green is not a coincidence. Most of these small trees, half of them are dead anyway, are going to have to come out. And that's what Fred kind of explained to me. He said the reason a lot of these trees are dead is because their roots are waterlogged. Because it is incredibly boggy out there. So it's good to see fresh in spring. I was out here during the snow melt as well. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now all this coming down the hill, pretty much all that I'm going to have to clear. See, I marked the one tree red, so a lot of these trees are going to come out. And again, as Fred predicted, most of them are already dead because they're trying to grow in a bog. That one is still alive, but it's probably going to have to go as well. That one I can keep, those two small ones. And then it's a matter of getting rid of these old stumps and clearing this deadfall. Unfortunately, all those young pines are going to have to come out. But as again, not really a great loss because they're not going to survive anyway. They'll get a little taller in one you know, moist season with the lake level high. And they will die. And that's why all this cut wood is here. I'm not sure how long ago these trees were cut. So they still lie there. They're pretty much rotted out. I have to move some of this stuff around in this little corner going into this clearing. This one I need to, let's just say, modify with some rock or some corduroy or a combination of both. And this is kind of going to be the entrance to our parcel of land. Now the challenge here. And like where I am right now, that orange marker is pretty much marking the property boundary. So it is kind of ironic that where our little rectangle of property begins in the east is right where the elevation drops into a bog. <laughs> if it had another 30 or 40 feet, that would be ideal. Then I could just kind of make a little landing in here where you can turn around, park the camp trailer. Fred explained to me why you have to be careful. Because I can walk out here no problem. Where I'm just standing right now is pretty firm. But what you can't see on the camera with all that moss, in a few of the lower spots, there's actually standing water. So while this looks like a perfect clearing to set up camp, the challenge is it's a really good risk of some of these kind of widow maker trees 
falling unexpectedly. So he pointed out there's a couple of decent trees, but he said mostly the only thing that can survive here are the cedars. And he said even the cedars are going to struggle where the land is this wet. So I'll walk around a bit. And again, you can't feel it, but I don't know if you can hear it in the microphone, how that you can hear the squish, squish, squish. This is just a mat of roots kind of holding the soil together. Where I'm standing now is dry and firm, and there's a nice cedar happily taking root here, and it's grown to a very nice ripe old age. Right next to it is a spruce that hasn't fared as well. So you can kind of see why there aren't as many trees here. It's not because this was clear cut at some point. It's because trees grow and die and fall over because the ground beneath is so mushy. It's basically boggy. Which of course will be very good here. There's a perfect spot. So you can see that's right for those leaves. That is standing water. So it's not like the Scottish moors where you make a wrong step and you're disappearing quicksand. But as Fred pointed out, people have parked vehicles in areas like this, come back and have them up to their axles or doors as they slowly sink in the mud. And he said, that's the problem. If you put something heavy on a bog patch, it will slowly sink. So wouldn't be fun if it were easy. So I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe just push some rocks there in the corner, give ourselves a little island. Uh, the sun's coming out a little bit, you can see better. I think it's gonna work out. Just would have been nice if that high ground had just come over another 30, 40 feet, that would have been perfect. Of course, if that were the case, it'd be full of mature trees and not a clearing. But gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous area. In fact, I look right over there, that ground seems a little higher and drier. I'll go check it out. And here where I'm standing is also a little higher and drier. So I think part of this is full of dead trees because of high water level. And part of it, you can tell from back there, I think also, just some horrific wind ripped a lot of these trees out so many years ago. You can see how many were broken at the tops. Well, hopefully you enjoyed a quick uh, overview there of what I'm trying to accomplish, clearing a trail in the land in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Many more adventures coming up. Now on the same trip, I did a lot of work experimenting with a pull pal and trying to figure out how to winch myself up that 26 or 27 degree uh, incline. Needless to say, it was a lot more challenging on the way out after it had rained quite a bit and I had to pull the trailer behind me. So once again, my winch and all my recovery gear got a pretty good workout. I'll save that for another video.